Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Teachings that you have invested in me has produced healing and relationship with God in my life. So I'm just eternally grateful to you and to your ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach through a little booklet that I've written entitled 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life. And this is occasioned by the fact that it's our 55th year anniversary of when the Lord changed my life. And I just have gone through and kind of in chronological order shared some of the most important revelations that God has ever given me. It's totally you know, the truth has made me free, and I believe that the same thing will work for you, so I'm just working through them. We've now covered four of these 20 revelations. I hadn't got time to go back and summarize all that, but this is a little booklet that will summarize just real quickly some of these major revelations. And what I'm going to start talking about today, this is number five revelation out of these 20s, and I'm going to start talking about God's kind of love for us. And, you know, this is something that everybody says, well, yeah, I know that God loves us, but really most people do not do not understand that God's love is unconditional and it has nothing to do with your goodness. It's not because you are so awesome that God loves you. It's because God is so gracious. It's because He is so full of love that He loves us. And once you understand this, it's actually liberating. The Scripture says in Galatians 5, 6 that faith works by love. And this isn't talking about just a carnal love. You know, the world today calls love, they, they say all kinds of things. People will say, I love my wife, I love my dog, and I love ice cream. Hopefully you love all of those things differently. You don't love a dog the same way that you love your wife. You know, I saw a homosexual parade and they had a little three-year-old kid standing there with a banner that says, love is love, implying that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's between two men or if it's between two women. If it's love, you just need to let love have its course. That's not love. That's lust. You could take that same logic and say that, therefore, a man, a 40-year-old man having sex with a three-year-old girl is love. That's not love. That's, pedof that's being a pedophile. That's ungodly. You could say that a man having sex with a dog is love, and it's not love. We use love in a very loose way, but God's kind of love is totally different than what the world is portraying today. Our movies portray God's love as, you know, you just fall in love, you fall out of love. You know, they portray it with a little fat baby and a bow and arrow and you're struck by Cupid and you fall in love. That's not the way that God's kind of love is. That's lust. And this is something that is demonic. It's never going to satisfy. It's never going to uh, be something that will last. That's the reason people get married and divorced and stuff like this is because it wasn't God's kind of love in the first place. Man, there's so much that I'd love to say about this. Let me just go back. You know, I've been talking about these 20 revelations and they're kind of in a chronological order. And so what happened with me, the very first revelation was I recognized I was a sinner headed to hell. I had a revelation of hell, and that's the first thing we covered. Then I understood that salvation was a gift to be received, not a wage to be earned. And I understood salvation by grace. And then I talked about the revelation of being a living sacrifice at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And then I talked about our relative unworthiness is what I finished up with yesterday. And, you know, all of this comes in my personal life. I got born again when I was eight, but then I became a religious Pharisee, got to trusting in my own goodness. And when I was 18, I had this encounter where the glory of God just showed up on a Saturday night in one of our prayer meetings. And I saw God's holiness and goodness and my relative unworthiness, and I began to just repent of everything. And I know some people will think I'm exaggerating, but honestly, as an 18-year-old, I was told, well, actually at 12 years old, the Baptist pastor of our church told me that God needed my dad in heaven more than I needed him here, and so he killed my dad and took him when I just three weeks after I'd turned 12. 
AND SO I WAS TOLD THAT GOD WAS THIS HARSH, DEMANDING, HARD TO PLEASE GOD, AND THAT IF YOU STEPPED OUT OF LINE, THAT GOD WOULD KILL YOU, GOD WOULD PUT SICKNESS ON YOU TO BREAK YOU AND DO THINGS. AND BECAUSE OF THE THEOLOGY THAT I HAD AS AN 18-YEAR-OLD, WHEN I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD AND I SAW HOW HOLY HE WAS, AND I, FOR THE FIRST TIME IN MY LIFE, REALIZED THAT ALL OF MY RIGHTEOUSNESS WAS LIKE A FILTHY RAG. Uh, ISAIAH CHAPTER 64, VERSE 6, WHEN I FINALLY REALIZED THAT, I JUST... FEAR HIT ME THAT GOD WAS GOING TO KILL ME. I DIDN'T THINK I'D GO TO HELL BECAUSE I UNDERSTOOD THAT I HAD MADE JESUS MY LORD AND I REALLY DID BELIEVE THAT I WAS BORN AGAIN, BUT I HONESTLY WAS AFRAID THAT GOD WAS GOING TO KILL ME. AND BEFORE HE... WHEN I WAS IN THIS PRESENCE OF GOD, IT JUST OVERWHELMED ME. AND I KNOW SOME OF YOU THINK I'M DRAMATIZING THIS AND MAKING IT BIGGER, BUT THAT'S ACTUALLY WHAT HAPPENED. AND THIS IS NOT UNIQUE TO ME. THE SAME THING HAPPENED TO MOSES. SAME THING HAPPENED TO ISAIAH IN THE SIXTH CHAPTER OF ISAIAH. WHEN ISAIAH SAW THE GLORY OF GOD, HE FELL ON HIS FACE AND HE SAYS, GOD, HE SAYS, DEPART FROM ME BECAUSE I'M A MAN OF UNCLEAN LIPS AND DWELL IN THE MIDST OF A PEOPLE OF UNCLEAN LIPS. THE SAME THING HAPPENED TO DANIEL. HE FELL AT THE FEET OF GOD AS IF HE WAS DEAD AND HE HAD TO HAVE AN ANGEL COME AND SUPERNATURALLY STRENGTHEN HIM. IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, WHEN PETER SAW JESUS ON THE RESURRECTION DAY, HE, YOU KNOW, GRABBED HIS COAT UNTO HIM. HE FELT LIKE HE WAS NAKED. AND EVERY TIME PEOPLE SEE THE GLORY OF GOD, THEIR RELATIVE UNWORTHINESS IS A REVELATION AND IT CAUSES FEAR. WHEN MARY SAW THE ANGEL, uh, THE ANGEL TOLD HER, FEAR NOT, MARY, BECAUSE I BRING YOU GOOD TIDINGS. BUT EVERY TIME SOMEBODY GETS IN THE TRUE PRESENCE OF GOD, WHETHER IT'S PHYSICAL OR JUST A SPIRITUAL REVELATION, I GUARANTEE YOU EVERY TIME THEY RECOGNIZE THEIR RELATIVE UNWORTHINESS. ANYBODY WHO IS REALLY PROMOTING THEMSELVES AND THINKING THAT THEY ARE HOT STUFF AND THAT THEY ARE GOD'S GIFT TO MANKIND, YOU HAVE NEVER SEEN THE GLORY OF GOD. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, WHEN YOU STAND BEFORE GOD AND WHEN YOU SEE HIS GLORY, YOU ARE NOT GOING TO BE PROMOTING YOURSELF. YOU AREN'T GOING TO SHOW GOD YOUR RESUME. YOU AREN'T GOING TO REVEAL TO HIM ALL OF YOUR AWARDS AND STUFF. Man. <laughs> YOU KNOW, I HEARD a, a GUY ONE TIME, I READ THIS IN A BOOK, AND HE WAS A MINISTER, AND HE HAD A VISION OF GOING TO HEAVEN, AND, and THERE WAS MILLIONS OF PEOPLE STANDING BEFORE GOD, AND THEY WERE ALL HAVING TO BE GIVEN ACCOUNT OF THEIR LIFE, AND HE SAW PEOPLE THAT HAD DONE MUCH MORE GOOD THAN WHAT HE HAD DONE. AND THEY WERE CAST INTO HELL, AND THEY WERE drugged AND THROWN INTO THIS PIT. AND AS HE SAW THAT PEOPLE WHO LIVED A HOLIER LIFE, A BETTER LIFE THAN HE DID, WENT TO HELL, THIS MAN, FEAR CAME UPON HIM. AND WHEN HE FINALLY GOT BEFORE GOD, HE JUST SAID, I DON'T, I don't PLEAD ANY OF MY OWN GOODNESS. IT'S ONLY BECAUSE OF MY FAITH IN JESUS. AND THE LORD SAID, WELCOME good and faithful servant, and welcomed him in, not because he was better. There was people that were better than him, but they were trusting in themselves, and they were cast into hell. But the reason he was accepted was because of his relationship with God. I tell you, that's powerful. And so anyway, this is what happened to me in that prayer meeting. For the first time in my life, I really saw the glory of God and all of my self-righteousness was like a filthy rag. And I began to repent AND, YOU KNOW, IF YOU'VE HEARD SOME OF MY TESTIMONY, I HADN'T DONE MOST OF THE THINGS THAT OTHER PEOPLE HAD DONE. I'M NOW 74 YEARS OLD, AND I'VE NEVER SAID A WORD OF PROFANITY, NEVER TAKEN A DRINK OF LIQUOR, NEVER SMOKED A CIGARETTE. I'VE LIVED A RELATIVELY HOLY LIFE, and I, BUT I WAS TRUSTING IN MY GOODNESS. BUT WHEN I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD, I BEGAN TO REPENT. AND BECAUSE I HADN'T PHYSICALLY COMMITTED SOME OF THE ACTS THAT OTHER PEOPLE DID, I HAD TO START REPENTING OF THE THOUGHTS. YOU KNOW, JESUS SAID, IF YOU LUST IN YOUR HEART, YOU'RE GUILTY OF ADULTERY. IF YOU ARE ANGRY IN YOUR HEART, THEN YOU'RE GUILTY OF MURDER. SO I HADN'T OUTWARDLY DONE THOSE THINGS, BUT I HAD HAD LUST, I HAD HAD ANGER, AND I STARTED CONFESSING MY THOUGHTS. AND THIS WAS IN A PRAYER MEETING WITH THE LEADER OF OUR CHURCH AND WITH MY PEERS, MY BROTHERS AND SISTERS, FRIENDS AROUND ME, I WAS CONFESSING THE THOUGHTS I HAD HAD, AND I WAS NAMING NAMES. WHATEVER REPUTATION I HAD WAS TOTALLY SHOT. BUT MAN, I WAS IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD, AND NOTHING ELSE MATTERED TO ME, AND I JUST STARTED CONFESSING THIS. AND SO ANYWAY, TO MAKE THIS LONG STORY SHORT, AFTER AN HOUR AND A HALF 
OF ME CONFESSING EVERYTHING I HAD EVER DONE OR THOUGHT OR EVER WOULD DO, I JUST HAD NOTHING LEFT TO SAY. AND I WAS JUST IN A PUDDLE OF TEARS ON THE FLOOR, AND I DIDN'T KNOW WHAT TO DO. NOBODY ELSE KNEW WHAT TO DO. I MEAN, THIS SHOCKED EVERYBODY. THERE WAS PROBABLY MAYBE 10 PEOPLE IN THAT LITTLE PRAYER MEETING IN A BAPTIST PASTOR'S STUDY. AND NOBODY KNEW WHAT TO DO, AND I JUST WAS LAYING ON THE FLOOR WAITING TO SEE WHAT GOD'S RESPONSE WAS GOING TO BE. AND YOU KNOW, THE THING THAT AMAZED ME AND CHANGED MY LIFE, INSTEAD OF JUDGMENT, INSTEAD OF REJECTION, A SUPERNATURAL, TANGIBLE LOVE OF GOD JUST FLOWED OVER ME. AND I FELT THE LOVE OF GOD. AND IT WAS THAT WAY FOR FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS. FOR FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS, I WAS JUST CAUGHT UP IN THE LOVE OF GOD. IT WAS TANGIBLE. FOR FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS, I COULDN'T SIT DOWN AND EAT A MEAL. I WAS SO EXCITED ABOUT THE FACT THAT GOD LOVED ME AND THAT I WAS EXPERIENCING IT AND WALKING IN IT, THAT I MEAN, I JUST WOULD GRAB SOMETHING TO EAT AS I WALKED OUT THE DOOR. I NEVER SLEPT MORE THAN AN HOUR AT ONE TIME. I WAS SO EXCITED ABOUT THE LORD. I JUST COULDN'T DO IT. I WOULD JUST NAP HERE AND THERE. AND I MEAN, MY LIFE WAS TOTALLY CHANGED. BUT IT WAS... IT WAS A BLESSING, BUT IT WAS CONFUSING BECAUSE MY WHOLE LIFE UP UNTIL THAT POINT HAD BEEN... I'D BEEN TAUGHT THAT IN ORDER TO EXPERIENCE GOD'S LOVE, YOU HAD TO LIVE HOLY AND DO SOMETHING TO EARN GOD'S LOVE. AND MY WHOLE LIFE WAS ABOUT DOING AND TRYING TO EARN GOD'S FAVOR. AND HERE I WAS FOR THE FIRST TIME IN MY LIFE, I FINALLY REALIZED THAT I COULDN'T EVER DO ENOUGH. THAT, MAN, I JUST HAD COME SO FAR SHORT OF GOD'S GLORY THAT I JUST THREW MYSELF ON HIS MERCY AND I CONFESSED ALL OF THE WRONGS THAT WAS IN MY LIFE. I WASN'T PROFESSING MY GOODNESS. I WASN'T NAMING MY GOOD THINGS. I WAS ADMITTING HOW FAR SHORT I'D FALLEN OF WHAT GOD WANTED ME TO BE. AND THAT'S WHEN I EXPERIENCED THE LOVE OF GOD. IT WAS A WONDERFUL EXPERIENCE, BUT I COULDN'T UNDERSTAND IT. AND AFTER FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS, THE EMOTION WORE OFF. AND I COULD SPEND LITERALLY A WEEK OR TWO TEACHING ON WHY THAT HAPPENED. BUT GOD DOESN'T WANT YOU TO JUST LIVE BY FEELING AND EMOTION. THERE'S SOME OF YOU LISTENING TO MY TESTIMONY THAT YOU THINK, MAN, I WISH YOU'D PRAY FOR ME THAT I COULD HAVE THAT. DID YOU KNOW, I'VE TALKED TO A NUMBER OF PEOPLE THAT HAVE HAD SIMILAR EXPERIENCES WHERE FOR SOME REASON OR ANOTHER, THEY JUST SAW THE LOVE OF GOD FOR THEM. AND and IF YOU AREN'T CAREFUL, IT BECOMES ADDICTIVE TO WHERE YOU ARE ADDICTED TO THE FEELING. AND GOD DOESN'T WANT YOU TO LIVE YOUR LIFE BY FEELING. IT WILL ALWAYS, THE EMOTION WILL ALWAYS WEAR OFF. AND SO ANYWAY, I COULD SPEND A LOT OF TIME EXPLAINING THAT. BUT ONE OF THE BEST THINGS THAT EVER HAPPENED TO ME WAS THAT I GOT DRAFTED RIGHT AFTER THIS EXPERIENCE AND SENT TO VIETNAM. AND IN VIETNAM, I DIDN'T HAVE ANY CHRISTIAN FELLOWSHIP. THERE WAS ALL OF THIS PRESSURE OF THE UNGODLINESS AND, YOU KNOW, BEING SHOT AT. AND ON MY 21ST BIRTHDAY, I HAD 21 DIRECT MORTAR HITS ON MY BUNKER, AND WE WERE UNDER SEVERE ATTACK. AND IT JUST FORCED ME TO GET INTO THE WORD OF GOD AND TO FOCUS. AND GOD BEGAN TO TEACH ME HIS LOVE FOR ME, NOT BY FEELING, BUT JUST THROUGH THE WORD. AND THIS IS WHAT I WANT TO SHARE WITH YOU, THAT, YOU KNOW, THE FIFTH REVELATION OUT OF THESE 20 THAT I'M TALKING ABOUT IN THIS LITTLE BOOKLET WAS GOD'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. AND SEE, BECAUSE OF THE WAY IT HAPPENED, THE WAY THAT THAT REVELATION OF GOD'S LOVE CAME TO ME, I KNEW IT HAD NOTHING TO DO WITH ANY GOODNESS on, ON MY PART. YOU KNOW, OVER IN 1 JOHN, CHAPTER 4, AND IN VERSE 7, IT SAYS, BELOVED, LET US LOVE ONE ANOTHER, FOR LOVE IS OF GOD, AND EVERYONE THAT LOVETH IS BORN OF GOD AND KNOWETH GOD. HE THAT LOVETH NOT KNOWETH NOT GOD, FOR GOD IS LOVE. IN THIS WAS MANIFESTED THE LOVE OF GOD TOWARDS US, BECAUSE THAT GOD SENT HIS ONLY BEGOTTEN SON INTO THE WORLD THAT WE MIGHT LIVE THROUGH HIM. HEREIN IS LOVE, NOT THAT WE LOVED GOD, BUT THAT HE LOVED US AND SENT HIS SON TO BE THE PROPITIATION. THE WORD PROPITIATION MEANS THE ATONING SACRIFICE FOR OUR SINS. BELOVED, IF GOD SO LOVED US, WE OUGHT ALSO TO LOVE ONE ANOTHER. NO MAN HAS SEEN GOD AT ANY TIME. IF WE LOVE ONE ANOTHER, GOD DWELLETH IN US, AND HIS LOVE IS PERFECTED IN US. HEREBY KNOW WE THAT WE DWELL IN HIM AND HE IN US, BECAUSE HE HATH GIVEN US OF HIS SPIRIT. 
AND WE HAVE SEEN AND DO TESTIFY THAT THE FATHER HAS SENT THE SON TO BE THE SAVIOR OF THE WORLD. WHOSOEVER SHALL CONFESS THAT JESUS IS THE SON OF GOD, GOD DWELLETH IN HIM AND HE IN GOD. AND WE HAVE KNOWN AND BELIEVED THE LOVE THAT GOD HATH TO US. GOD IS LOVE. THAT'S THE SECOND TIME IN THESE VERSES THAT IT SAYS GOD IS LOVE. AND HE THAT DWELLETH IN LOVE DWELLETH IN GOD AND GOD IN HIM. SO GOD IS LOVE. THAT IS NOT ONE OF HIS CHARACTERISTICS. THAT IS JUST WHO HE IS. GOD IS LOVE. AND HIS LOVE, RELIGION HAS BASICALLY TAUGHT THAT, SURE, GOD IS LOVE, BUT HE WILL ONLY LOVE YOU WHEN YOU'RE LOVELY. I WANT YOU TO KNOW GOD HADN'T HAD ANYBODY LOVELY TO LOVE YET. THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 8, SAYS, GOD COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD US AND THAT WHILE WE WERE YET SINNERS, CHRIST DIED FOR US, MUCH MORE THAN BEING NOW JUSTIFIED BY HIS BLOOD, WE SHALL BE SAVED FROM WRATH THROUGH HIM. AND SO GOD COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD US WHILE WE WERE STILL A SINNER. GOD DIDN'T LOOK AT US AND THINK, OH, YOU ARE SO LOVELY AND YOU ARE SO AWESOME THAT I JUST CAN'T DO WITHOUT YOU. NO, GOD LOOKED AT US AND SAW US IN SUCH A MISERABLE STATE THAT HE SAID, I'M JUST GOING TO LOVE YOU BECAUSE HE IS LOVE. He didn't, HE DIDN'T LOVE US BASED ON ANY GOODNESS OF OUR OWN. SEE, A LACK OF UNDERSTANDING THIS IS WHY SOME PEOPLE JUST CAN'T BELIEVE THAT GOD WOULD EVER REALLY LOVE THEM BECAUSE THEY ARE THINKING THAT YOU HAVE TO BE WORTHY OF LOVE. NO, THAT'S NOT IT. GOD COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD US when the, WHILE WE WERE YET SINNERS, HE DIED FOR US. GOD SO LOVED THE WORLD THAT HE GAVE HIS ONLY BEGOTTEN SON, JOHN 3, 16. GOD'S LOVE FOR US IS ABSOLUTELY INDEPENDENT OF ANY GOODNESS ON YOUR PART. GOD IS LOVE. AND HE LOVES YOU BECAUSE HE IS LOVE, NOT BECAUSE YOU ARE LOVELY. HERE'S ANOTHER WAY OF SAYING IT IS THAT GOD LOVES YOU AND THERE'S NOTHING YOU CAN DO ABOUT IT. YOU CAN'T MAKE GOD LOVE YOU MORE AND YOU CAN'T MAKE GOD LOVE YOU LESS. GOD LOVES YOU COMPLETELY INDEPENDENT OF WHAT YOU DESERVE. NOW, SOME PEOPLE COULD TAKE THOSE STATEMENTS THAT I'VE SAID RIGHT THERE AND TOTALLY MISUNDERSTAND THEM AND MISAPPLY THEM AND SAY, WELL, THEN THEREFORE GOD JUST LOVES EVERYBODY. WELL, HE DOES LOVE EVERYBODY. HE SO LOVED THE WORLD THAT HE GAVE. BUT FOR THAT LOVE TO BEGIN TO WORK IN YOUR LIFE AND TO CHANGE YOUR LIFE AND TO RELEASE ITS POWER, YOU HAVE TO RESPOND TO THAT LOVE IN FAITH. AS IT SAYS OVER IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 8, IT SAYS, FOR BY GRACE ARE YOU SAVED THROUGH FAITH AND THAT NOT OF YOURSELVES. IT IS A GIFT OF GOD. GRACE IS WHAT GOD DOES FOR YOU INDEPENDENT OF YOU. AND THAT'S WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT. HE LOVES YOU, NOT BECAUSE YOU ARE LOVELY, BUT BECAUSE HE IS LOVE. THAT'S GRACE. BUT YOU'RE NOT ONLY SAVED BY GRACE, YOU'RE SAVED BY GRACE THROUGH FAITH. YOU HAVE TO PUT FAITH IN WHAT GOD HAS DONE. AND IF YOU ARE BELIEVING THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER GOD'S LOVE IS CONDITIONAL AND HE ONLY LOVES YOU WHEN YOU ARE WORTH LOVING, WHEN YOU'VE DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT, WELL, THEN YOU KNOW WHAT? YOU WILL HAVE SATAN TAKE ADVANTAGE OF THAT, AND HE WILL POINT OUT EVERY FAILURE, EVERY SIN, EVERY PROBLEM IN YOUR LIFE, AND AS YOU ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU HAVE SINNED AND YOU'VE COME SHORT AND THAT YOU AREN'T THE PERSON YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE, YOU WILL WIND UP EXCLUDING YOURSELF FROM GOD'S LOVE BECAUSE YOU KNOW YOU DON'T DESERVE IT. WHAT I'M TRYING TO SHARE WITH YOU IS THAT IT'S NOT BASED ON WHAT YOU DESERVE. IT'S A GIFT TO BE RECEIVED, NOT A WAGE TO BE EARNED. AND SEE, THIS IS WHAT HAPPENED IN MY LIFE. THROUGH ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT, I THOUGHT THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER BECAUSE OF MY GOODNESS, MY HOLINESS, GOD earned, uh, OWED ME SOMETHING AND THAT I WAS GOING TO RECEIVE GOD'S LOVE BASED ON MY GOODNESS. THAT NEVER WORKED. AND I LIVED HOLIER THAN MOST OF YOU WATCHING THIS PROBABLY HAVE LIVED, AND IT DIDN'T WORK FOR ME. IT'S NOT GOING TO WORK FOR YOU. BUT WHEN I FINALLY CAME TO THE END OF MYSELF AND I QUIT TRUSTING IN MY OWN GOODNESS AND I ACKNOWLEDGED THAT IT WAS NO GOODNESS IN ME, IT WASN'T ANYTHING I DESERVED, THEN GOD'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE BEGAN TO START MANIFESTING ITSELF IN MY LIFE. AND HERE I AM, 55 YEARS LATER, STILL TOTALLY TRANSFORMED. BUT I CAN TELL YOU THAT THE EMOTION OF THAT EXPERIENCE WORE OFF AFTER FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS. AND THERE'S REASONS FOR THAT. ONE OF THEM IS THAT I HAD SO MANY PEOPLE ATTACK ME AND CRITICIZE ME THAT IT TOOK MY ATTENTION OFF OF JESUS AND IT PUT MY ATTENTION ON ME AND THEY WERE sh TELLING ME EVERYTHING I WAS DOING WRONG AND 
AND, YOU KNOW, IT'S LIKE PETER WALKING ON THE WATER. AS LONG AS HE LOOKED AT JESUS, HE COULD WALK ON THE WATER. BUT WHEN HE STARTED TAKING HIS EYE also OFF OF JESUS AND LOOKED AT THE WIND AND THE WAVES, HE FELL. AND IT WAS THE SAME. WHEN I TOOK MY EYES OFF OF JESUS AND WHAT HE HAD DONE AND GOT TO LISTENING TO EVERYBODY'S CRITICISM, IT CAUSED THAT EMOTION TO LEAVE. BUT MY POINT IS THAT THE EMOTION LEFT 55 YEARS AGO, BUT THE REVELATION OF GOD'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE FOR ME IS STRONGER TODAY THAN IT'S EVER BEEN. AND I'M TELLING YOU THAT YOU DON'T HAVE TO HAVE SOME MIRACULOUS ENCOUNTER WHERE YOU JUST INTUITIVELY KNOW THESE THINGS. YOU CAN GO TO THE WORD OF GOD AND YOU CAN RENEW YOUR MIND AND BEGIN TO SEE THAT GOD'S LOVE IS UNCONDITIONAL. LIKE THAT VERSE I'VE ALREADY USED, ROMANS 5, 8. HE COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARDS YOU IN THAT WHILE YOU WERE YET A SINNER, HE DIED FOR YOU. IF YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, AND IF YOU'VE TRULY RECEIVED SALVATION, YOU HAD TO COME TO A PLACE TO WHERE YOU ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU'D SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD, ROMANS 3, 23. AND SO YOU ASKED FOR FORGIVENESS AND YOU RECEIVED IT AS A GIFT. YOU DIDN'T EARN IT. MOST OF YOU, WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU WERE AT YOUR WORST. SOME OF YOU WERE LIVING IN ADULTERY. SOME OF YOU WERE DRUG ADDICTS. SOME OF YOU WERE ALCOHOLICS, uh, DIFFERENT THINGS. AND YET YOU RECEIVED THE GREATEST MIRACLE THAT YOU COULD EVER RECEIVE, WHICH IS FORGIVENESS OF SINS. BUT THE SAD FACT IS THAT ONCE YOU GET BORN AGAIN, MANY TIMES WHEN PEOPLE GO TO CHURCH, THEY GET IT WRONG. THEY, they REALIZE THAT THEY WERE SAVED BY GRACE, BUT NOW YOU'VE GOT TO EARN YOUR HEALING, YOUR JOY, YOUR PEACE, YOUR PROSPERITY, BY ACTIONS. AND SO WE GET BACK INTO THIS THING OF TRYING TO PLEASE GOD. IT SAYS IN COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 6, AS YOU HAVE THEREFORE RECEIVED CHRIST JESUS THE LORD, SO WALK YE IN HIM. THAT MEANS THAT THE SAME WAY YOU RECEIVE SALVATION IS THE SAME WAY YOU RECEIVE FORGIVENESS OF SINS, HEALING, PROSPERITY, DELIVERANCE, EVERYTHING ELSE. YOU DIDN'T EARN IT. IT WAS A GIFT. YOU CAN'T EARN YOUR HEALING. YOU CAN'T EARN YOUR PROSPERITY. YOU JUST NEED TO HUMBLE YOURSELF AND RECEIVE THE UNCONDITIONAL LOVE AND GRACE OF GOD. I'VE GOT A LOT MORE TO SAY ABOUT THAT, BUT WE'RE GOING TO BE TEACHING ON THIS AGAIN TOMORROW. LET ME JUST MENTION THAT I'VE GOT THIS LITTLE BOOKLET THAT I'M GIVING. THIS IS MY FREE GIFT TO YOU, ABOUT 20 REVELATIONS THAT WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE. WE'VE GOT CD'S AND DVD'S AND A USB. AND THEN THIS WEEK, WE'VE GOT A LOT OF MATERIAL THAT GO ALONG WITH GOD'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. I've GOT CD'S AND DVD'S ON GOD'S KIND OF LOVE TO YOU. I'VE GOT A TEACHING THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS THAT IS PAUL'S MASTERPIECE ON GRACE. I'VE GOT THAT IN CD AND DVD AND ALSO A BOOK ON THIS. OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL OF THESE PRODUCTS. PLEASE LISTEN AND THEN CALL OR WRITE TODAY. YOU KNOW, AS I WAS SHARING ON MY PROGRAM TODAY, GOD LOVES YOU AND THERE'S NOTHING YOU CAN DO ABOUT IT. YOU CAN'T MAKE HIM LOVE YOU MORE AND YOU CAN'T MAKE HIM LOVE YOU LESS. IT'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. AND I TELL YOU, THE WORLD NEEDS TO HEAR THIS AND I'M DOING EVERYTHING I CAN. I'M ON TELEVISION ALL AROUND THE WORLD, BUT DID YOU KNOW THE NUMBER ONE WAY WE HAVE OF IMPARTING THESE TRUTHS INTO PEOPLE'S LIVES IS OUR CARIS BIBLE COLLEGE. AND WE ARE HAVING SO MANY PEOPLE COME THAT WE CAN'T ACCOMMODATE THEM ALL. WE ARE IN A BUILDING PROGRAM AND WE'RE BUILDING JUST AS FAST AS I CAN, BUT I NEED TO BE BUILDING FASTER. I'VE GOT A VISION. GOD HAS SHOWED ME THINGS TO DO THAT IS GOING TO TAKE AT LEAST 10 YEARS PROBABLY TO GET IT DONE. AND IT'S GOING TO COST HUNDREDS OF MILLIONS OF DOLLARS. AND I JUST NEED PEOPLE TO JOIN WITH ME. SO I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO GO TO AWMI.NET SLASH CAMPUS. AND THERE IS A VIDEO THERE THAT WILL SHOW WHAT OUR CAMPUS IS GOING TO LOOK LIKE AS WE BUILD OUT THESE BUILDINGS. IT WILL TAKE YOU INSIDE AND SHOW YOU WHAT THEY'RE GOING TO LOOK LIKE. AND I TELL YOU, I BELIEVE IT WILL INSPIRE YOU. AND I JUST NEED PEOPLE TO HELP ME. I'D LIKE TO ASK THAT IF GOD HAS TOUCHED YOU THROUGH THIS PROGRAM, HELP US TO BUILD THIS. THIS ISN'T FOR ME. THIS ISN'T GOING TO ME. THIS IS HELPING US BUILD A CAMPUS WHERE WE CAN HAVE LITERALLY THOUSANDS AND THOUSANDS OF STUDENTS COME AND RECEIVE THIS UNCONDITIONAL LOVE OF GOD AND THEN GO OUT AND SHARE IT. THAT'S THE ONLY WAY THAT WE'RE GOING TO SEE THINGS CHANGE. I'M INVOLVED IN POLITICS. I'M INVOLVED IN ALL THESE SOCIAL ISSUES, BUT THE REAL POWER IS THE POWER OF THE GOSPEL. AND WE HAVE A GOOD PRODUCT. WE JUST NEED ROOM TO BE ABLE TO SHARE IT WITH MORE PEOPLE. SO GO TO AWMI.NET SLASH CAMPUS 
and check it out. And there's a place that you can become what we call a foundation builder, a monthly partner and help us build out this campus, awmi.net slash campus. Man, before I came to Karis, I was so broken. I dealt a lot with anxiety and depression. I didn't really realize I could have an actual relationship with God. When I came here, I started to see God like, you know, He just wants to have a relationship with me. It totally transformed the way I look at God. God longs to have fellowship with you. This is where faith comes from. It's not just head knowledge, Bible school knowledge, it's revelation knowledge that changes you just been set free from a lot of the bondage I was in. I haven't been depressed in so long. Pretty awesome having that just weight lifted and putting on Jesus' yoke. You come here and you meet God personally, and then He gives you a whole new direction. This is a time, this is a season of your life that God's wanting to show you who you really are and what He's wanting to do in your life. If you have a desire for Bible college, God's the one that put it there. If you're considering coming to Karis, I just want to say it's going to be one of the best decisions you've made in your life. Andrew is offering his booklet, 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Additionally, Andrew mentioned his teachings, Romans, Paul's masterpiece on grace, and God's kind of love to you. Contact us today to receive these valuable resources. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Also, our products and additional resources are available in various languages through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Gospel Truth Conference has just been incredible. It's electric. You can feel the spirit everywhere. You can feel the truth coming out and you can feel your spirit saying, this is the truth. The first step to walking in victory is to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and to quit settling for less. And so many people are shooting at nothing and hitting it every single time. He's so nice and just sweet, just yeah. down to earth. You know, just like he said, like he is on TV. He, that's how he is in person. Right. Thank you for preaching the gospel truth. This is a changing life. <laughs> Promise you, you're gonna be a brand new person inside and out. This is a conference. We ought to go back home different. I'll say, what happened to you? God changed me. I can't get this smile off my face. 